Let's have a look now at the programming software for the DR1801, downloadable from the Biofake website. Now you have to remember that you can't upgrade the firmware on the on the uh, DR1801, so we're stuck with this CPS software in the same way that we're stuck with the firmware. When I program a DMR radio, what I tend to look at first is the uh, contacts. I will then program the channels in that I need. Um, I'll then move to putting those channels into zones. And with software like this, uh, you will also need to look at receive groups and scan groups if you wish to set the radio up to scan. So I've already prepared a file um, and we'll just uh, see if we can find it here and there it is okay so we'll open that up the, um, I'll show you the contacts that I've programmed so far I intend to use this radio basically with my hotspot at home and so I've programmed the contacts for the main talk groups that I'm going to be using. But just to show you how easy it is to put a contact in, we will enter another one. I'll put the uh, the Irish uh, talk group in. So your contacts are normally going to be group calls if we're dealing with uh, DMR talk groups that you're going to use on, um, on a hotspot or on a local repeater or node or whatever. So I'll create a group call. You see it's dropped it in at number nine at the bottom there. If I press edit, I can give the uh, contact now uh, a name. And uh, I can just call it Island 2354. It's a group call. And uh, code, that's going to be the contact number and I OK that and that's programmed in. So that's the contact. Now the problem with this type of software and the type of firmware that the, the DR1801 operates is that if we're dealing with a repeater or a hotspot or a node for every contact that we want to be able to access we're going to have to program a separate channel as well. Let's just go to uh, the channel list, okay, and you'll see here that I've got a number of channels set at the frame, same frequency, 439300. That is the frequency of my hotspot at home. And for each contact that I want to be able to access, I'm going to need a separate channel. So I'll just show you how that's done. Because I've put a new contact in. I haven't got a channel to go with it. So I will create a channel. I'm going to create a digital channel. You see again it drops down at the bottom here of the list. I press edit. I put in the frequency I want. Since it's my hotspot I'm dealing with. I'm going to put in 439300 my frequency. Um, I don't need high uh, transmit power if I'm at home using the hotspot, so I can untick that box. Um, receive group, I'll show you the receive groups a little later on, but I'll just set that to receive group 1. You'll see there's a box here for contact, I can drop down here, and you'll see we've got Ireland there, I'll just uh, select that. My hotspot is on colour code 1. I'll just select slot 2. It doesn't really matter in the case of the hotspot. And now I go to OK. And that new channel. Although I didn't give it a name. I'll just go back. It's just showing the channel 16. Let's go back. What I should have done is at the top here giving it a name. And I'm just going to call it Island. There's the Island uh, talk group. So OK that, and you can see now it's there with its name. 
um, the frequency. Now for this channel to be usable, so DMR radio, remember, we need to put it into a zone. If I click on zone, you see I've already got a number of zones set up. I'm going to want to put it into the hotspot zone. Okay, and you'll see that uh, these are the channels that are available to me on the left and the channels that are actually in the hotspot zone are listed on the right. So I can right click on Ireland, I can move channel to list, I can tick the Ireland box here, right click and move channel to list and now there it is in the hotspot zone. If I wanted to add another talk group, I would go back into contacts, I would create a new contact, then I would need to create a new channel to go with it, and then I would need to drop it into the zone. Now, in order for your DMR radio to function properly, I'm assuming like me, if you're using a hotspot at home, for example, you may have a particular channel on your radio selected, but you actually want to monitor all the DMR traffic that's coming through your hotspot. So you need to add all of those channels to a receive list. So let's go over to receive group. You see we've got three group lists. Uh, I've only used the group, I mean we could add more but the, the radio just happened to come or the software came with uh, three setup. Let's click on um, group list one, okay, and you'll see that we've got a uh, number of uh, channels in receive group one. Let's just tick island there, that will add it in. Um, what this means is that irrespective of what channel your radio set on, if you're in the hotspot zone, um, the radio will pass traffic that's in any of these talk groups on receive. Okay, so you'll be able to monitor all of the activity coming through your hotspot. Um, similarly, we have uh, scan uh, lists. We'll just have a look at a scan list. And again, we've got lists one and two, and we can select the channels we want in a particular scan list. If we go back to the channels dialog, let's pick one here, let's pick an analog channel. Okay, you'll see that we can select a scan list that we want the channel, particular channel added to. I'm not going to bother with scan list here. Um, there's a much, much easier way to do this under OpenGD77. There's a much easier way to do all of this, in fact. But unfortunately, this radio cannot be upgraded to OpenGD77. It does limit it. Um, but it is still a usable radio. And a, you know, reasonable radio to use as a basic starter radio for DMR. Programming an analog channel, again, is, is similar, but a little simpler, perhaps. Let's create an analog channel. <clears throat> and um, you see we've got um, in our channel list here, a new channel, channel 17. We press edit, we give it a name. I'm gonna, uh, this is just gonna be a simplex channel. I'm gonna call it S21. Put the frequency in here, 145, decimal 525. It's a simplex channel, so the RX frequency will be the same. Okay, channel spacing we can select was 12.5 kcs on um, uh, 2 meters FM. And um, again, we've got the um, options here to um, enable it for scanning. We've got options to add a CTCSS on transmit and on receive more relevant if we were using a repeater. Of course, if we were using a repeater with an offset, we've just put the correct uh, transmit and receive frequencies in these boxes. We don't need to set an offset because we program transmit and uh, receive frequencies separately. 
when we're done with this dialog box, all we have to do is click OK. There's our new channel. We'll need to add that channel to a zone for it to become functional. Go into zones. We've got an analog zone that I've set up earlier. You'll see on the right it's got four channels in it. I'm now going to add this S21 channel to this analog zone. So I click the checkbox against S21 on the left hand box. Right click, move channel to list. And there it is now in my analog zone. When I finished, I'm ready to write this code plug to my radio. I plug the radio into the programming lead. Programming lead, of course, plugged into the PC and I identify which COM port it's on. Show you that in a moment. And we'll just be clicking right to radio, selecting the COM port, clicking OK, and that will upload the new code plug to the radio. We can then, for safety's sake, that's going to, I'm not going to upload something connected to it, so we'll cancel that. I would always save the file, give it a name, and uh, save your file. Okay. And before you write anything new to the radio, once you've got it hooked up and you open the software, what I would do is read whatever's on the radio because. Once your radio is charged, you switch it on and it's all working, you know it will have some programming in it and you know that's a working code plug. So by reading that, and I've got mine saved here. Okay, factory settings. If anything goes wrong, if you make a mistake with your programming and the radio just locks up, you can just overwrite it with the original settings and start again. Okay, because I will show you something here. They're under uh, basic uh, configuration. Um, I had some issues and I've not had them. I've programmed lots of DMR radios, including a number of Biofengs. I mean, the, the, the identical looking DM-18 or you know, when I programmed with the standard Biofeng software when I first had it, didn't have these issues. But you see this dual standby setting here and the basic configuration, I've, I've set it off here. And I had it on another setting and it was causing havoc with the radio. Okay, you can actually alter this setting from the front panel of the radio, but by setting it to off you in the software, everything worked okay. So that's just a little tip. Um, and I only discovered that this was the issue by comparing the original code plug to my new code plug. And um, it's worth backing up the original code plug uh, it doesn't take any time, but you can see there the various settings we can alter and the basic configuration. This is where you will program your DMR ID if you're going to use the radio on DMR. You're going to need your DMR ID. You can give the radio a name. There's some squelch settings here, Vox settings, um, the channel modes, scan modes, dual standby, as we've already covered. Okay. We can um, set the backlight time, whether the channel display is set to name or frequency or number even. You can set it a channel number. You can disable the uh, LED on the radio and you can change some aspects of the, the boot up screen here. So quite a bit you can do, but just watch out for that dual standby setting. It caught me out. Um, I'll show you in a moment the code plug uploading to the radio. Then we'll have a look at the radio receiving some uh, DMR transmissions. And I'll also compare it to my DM1801 with the upgraded uh, GD77 firmware. And you'll be able to see the d differences in display and so on. So the radios are side by side. The... Um, Upgraded DM1801 is on the left. We're listening at the moment to Talk Group 91. You'll see when this guy hands the QSO over, there's a difference in the displays. Retired out of California. 
California in 1994. Like, uh, we had to get out the next day. You know, the display on the right, the font December isn't as clear either on the um, standard we film. We're traveling and we got this Georgia. We've got an S meter on the um, there stayed there for, gosh, upgraded firmware. I'll and just. Uh, years ago, we moved here to South Carolina. A make the display again. I'll just bring it up a little bit closer and get the camera to focus. Yeah. You see, we've got an S meter here. We've got more information. Time slot 2, we've got a power setting, color code, and so on. We've got the name of the tow group on the um, station call sign on the standard uh, firmware. Well, all we've got is, let's just see if we can focus, we've got the tow group. And we've got the DMR, DMR ID of the station that's talking, but not the call sign. We've got no S meter uh, here. We've also got a battery indicator. So we've got battery indicator, color code, power out, time slot, and the details there. So a lot more functionality on the display with the upgraded firmware, but unfortunately, this radio, as I said earlier, cannot be upgraded. The